In the previous part of the video, we'd seen that hydrogen and oxygen react to form water. Let's talk about another chemical equation. Zinc reacts with sulfuric acid to give us zinc sulfate and hydrogen. Do you notice something interesting about these two equations? Okay, let's draw a table under the first equation. In the first column, we write the symbol of the elements that are involved in the equation. Then in the second column, we write the number of atoms in the reactants. And in the third, we write the number of atoms in the products. Which are the elements involved in the first equation? Just two elements. So we write H and O in the first column. Now for each of these elements, we need to find the number of atoms on the reactants side. The number of atoms of hydrogen is 2 and the number of atoms of oxygen is also 2. Now we move to the right hand side which has the product. How many atoms of hydrogen exist in the product? 2, that's right. And how many atoms of oxygen? Just 1. For each element, we look at the numbers written in the second and the third column. For hydrogen, we see that the number of atoms on each side is equal. But for oxygen, we see that the number of atoms on the left is 2 and that on the right is just 1. Do you know what we call such an equation? Yes, unbalanced equation. If the number of atoms of each element on the reactant side is not equal to the number of atoms of the respective elements on the product side, then we say that the equation is unbalanced. Now, can you make a similar table for the equation on the right? Can you fill in the values in these cells? Okay, so did you make a list of the elements present in this equation? We have zinc, hydrogen, sulfur and oxygen. On the left, the number of atoms of zinc is 1 and that on the right is also 1. And similarly, we find out the remaining cells of these three elements. What do you observe? You notice that for each element, the number of atoms on the reactant side is equal to the number of atoms on the product side. And note my words. It's true for each of the elements involved in the equation. We call such a chemical equation a balanced equation. Now you know the difference between balanced and unbalanced chemical equations. But why is the unbalanced equation called so? Do you remember the law of conservation of mass? According to the law of conservation of mass, Mass can neither be created nor destroyed in a chemical reaction. So the total mass of elements present in the reactants must be equal to the total mass of elements in the products. In layman terms, the number of atoms of each element must be the same before and after the chemical reaction. Hence we say that the first chemical equation is unbalanced. Can we balance this equation though? Yes, we can balance an unbalanced chemical equation. How can we do that? We will see that next.